All right, my friends, I don't think a lot of you guys recognize the risks that are out there in the investment world today. I, I don't. <clears throat> I think we've been so uh, suckered into the last 13 years, we've simply forgotten. And I just want to remind you, the risks are huge, probably worse than almost anything we've ever seen. So we're going to read, Denise had, write me this, had written me this on email uh, uh, yesterday morning. If you had a crystal ball and saw a 2008-2009 repeat in 2022-23, to what would you do now? All right, so we'll answer that question here in just a second. Now, this is essentially the question we asked ourselves a few weeks back. Um, uh, she says, I think the wise person pulls profits, pays down debt, yep, and builds cash reserve. Well, I could not agree more, 100%. Two weeks ago, we reduced our 401k uh, to just a company match, 100%, for the first time ever. We reduced our cash reserves by half in favor of reducing the outside principal, outstanding principal on our mortgage. Cannot agree more. We're accelerating our payoff to be done in half the time originally planned. Uh, we aren't putting any new money into investments aside from the 401k reduced amount. When the market tanks, there'll be plenty of buying opportunities, and there always is in times of correction a bear market. In the meantime, we want to head into a failing economy with as little debt as possible. I, could, I, I just could not agree more with that, absolutely. I'm not the biggest fan of how banks conduct themselves these days and leaving the less of a fan of how the Fed has handled monetary policy as of late. And then, of course, Congress is fiscal. Uh, when you announce your uh, change in stance regarding your mortgage, I applaud you. Every person must make their own decision. All right. Um, Let's see. At worst, we owe, at worst, we owe less money and don't put money into the market for a short period of time, but we still be sitting on cash to dump back in. At best, we are tossing hard-earned money into a market about to tank. All right, so um, I, I, I hear what she's saying. I completely agree. You pay off debt. I, I'm not – look, man, I, I'm still putting money in dollar-cost averaging. Dollar-cost averaging isn't the risk that you got to worry about. The risk that you have – because remember, if you're dollar-cost averaging, let's just say 1000 bucks a month. All right, that thousand bucks a month, if it fell by 45%, that is, I mean, literally, that's just, that's, you know, a chump change relative to the overall investments that you have. So you still dollar cost average to the market. I mean, that's what I'm doing. I'm still putting a thousand bucks every two weeks in the market, a thousand bucks every two weeks in the market, because the, the beauty of dollar cost averaging is as the market fluctuates, you're, <laughs> he's such a beautiful boy. He's over there, we call him making his bed. He's got his, uh, uh, what a knucklehead. Uh, so dollar cost averaging, you're not, you don't have that much at risk when you're adding money to your current portfolio. The new money you're putting in isn't very big relative to the bulkhead that you have there. Taking profits off the table to put into cash, taking profits off the table to pay down debt, 100% makes sense. 100% without question, because that is the money that's at risk. You always got to look at value at risk, VAR. All right, what is at risk? You know, dollar cost averaging a couple, you know, every now and again, that's that's not big at risk. But if you got 500,000 bucks in a portfolio, the entirety of that's at risk, especially for a year or two out, especially if you're carrying some debt, especially if you got no cash. You're relying on the markets to do what, you, to provide you to put food on the table. Don't do that. So I want to share with you something here, man. Uh, this is the second part of this. The 70s were stagflation, all right, 70s. There are no growth in the markets. We know from 1971 to 1981, after inflation, the S&P 500 was down 16%. From 1971 to 1981, you lost money in the S&P 500 net of inflation. That is a fact. From 1971 to 1981, you got smoked in treasury bonds. That is a fact. But I want to share with you the difference between the two things where we are today because it's much worse today. All right, so look at this. Here is the yield on 10-year treasuries going back to uh, 1950s or something like that. I don't know, what is this right here? Uh, 1962. So in 1970, this is when your old buddy Josh was born right there. Right, well, it's July. Seven and a half. Right here at the end of 1970, or the middle of 1971, 7.1. So the yields on treasuries were at 7%. So you could put $100,000 in a treasury and guarantee you get at least $7,000 a year, each and every year. All right, now, by the time 1980s come around, uh, we're way up high. We're doubled that. But still, right here, the yields on seven on 10-year treasuries were at 7%. What are the yields now? 1.3. I think it's actually 1.5 right now. 
So I, I'm telling you, man, <laughs> it's going to get worse here. So if you look at the 10-year, 1.56. So you were getting 7000 a year each and every year back then, guaranteed by the Federal Reserve. That, that, that bond matures in 1981. And instead of getting seven, you were getting uh, 15, 13. <laughs> Not too shabby. You're getting one and a half now. That bomb returns 10 years now. What are you getting? I don't know. But you see the difference there? You're literally getting 1,500, whereas here you're getting 7,000, 7,500. That's a significant difference. Part two of that, S&P 500. The P.E. ratio in the 1970s, right? It's hard to see. You got 19 right there, 1970. That's about 13. You were paying 13 bucks for every dollar of earnings. Now you're paying 28 bucks for every dollar of earnings. <laughs> you see the difference here? You're doubling the yield, you're doubling the dollar, the P.E. ratio. And the reason you're doing that simple is because the treasury rates are so low. But when treasuries start rising, what happens to the S&P 500? Well, we know this, man. I mean, when treasuries rise, the price of stocks goes down. We know that. That's what happens. And look, from 1970 to 1980 is exactly what happened. As the treasuries rose, the price of stocks went down. The PEs went down. See, look, from 1970 to 1981, we're trading at 6 PE. Why? Because from 1970 to 1981, the yields went from 7 to 15. It's the same thing here. So if right here, we're at 1.5 for 10-year Treasury yields, and right here, we're at 30 for PE. 10-year Treasury yields go up. And we're, we're talking from one and a half to three. That's a doubling. Same thing happened in 1970. What happens to PE ratios? Do they go down to five? No, but in this case, they went from, uh, you know, I mean, basically 15 right there, something like that, to five. That's a, you know, they lost 66% of the price. You know, 66% of the price might at 28 right now. 28 minus 66%, you know, that's down to 9.52 price to earnings ratio. Could that happen? Maybe. You're still getting dividends, but back then the dividend yield. So let's take a look. Hold on a second. Get three and a half dividend in 1970. <laughs> You're not getting that now, man. What are you getting the S&P 500? I don't know. It's not three and a half. It's like 1.8. So you can half that. So you can see what's happening here. Back then, you were getting much higher dividends. Back then, you are getting much higher 10-year treasury bonds. And back then, you were paying a whole heck of a lot for each share of, uh, for each dollar of earnings in S&P 500. You're paying a lot less. Now, you're paying a lot more for each share of dollar earnings in the S&P 500. Now, you're getting half the dividend yields you were getting. And now, you're getting a sixth, seventh of the interest rate you were getting back then as well. And so we don't have the recourse of, of high dividend yields to see us through if the market gets suddenly pretty shoddy. We don't have the recourse of high treasury bonds seeing us through if the markets go down. We don't have that, man. We don't have the recourse of low PEs if the markets fall. We don't have that either. There is, there is, no, there is no reprieve here. As if interest rates go up and, and the earnings falls, there is no place to say, well, I'm just going to allow my dividends to kick in. Now, you could say, well, we have low inflation. Really, do we? So let's take a look here. The inflation rate is at 6% in 1970. It actually went down because we had a, uh, a recession, essentially, um, from 1970 to 1972. The inflation rate was going down. It's not a pure in recession like we're normally here today, but there wasn't any growth, essentially. You know, it's kind of, you say, stagflation in some regard. But be it as it may, inflation was 6%. What did the cost of living come out for Social Security? What, 5.5%? So inflation is basically 5 to 6%. So inflation is exactly where it was in the 1970s, and that's because of supply chain issues by government dictate. I'm telling you, man, is evil crap. Inflation is high. It's not changing anytime soon. I'm just telling you right now. I wish it were. I look, you got this competing entity. You got um, 
deflationary demographics, deflationary in terms of spending. People just aren't going to spend as much. They're going to pay down debt. But then you got the quick and the easy one to obviously see, is which is uh, inflationary because of supply chains, because of co- uh, uh, government dictates and government uh, mandates and whatnot. It's nuts. And that, that will overtake the deflationary demographics for the short term. Short term could be five years. I don't know. So you got the same inflation of the 70s, much lower interest rates, much higher price of earnings, much lower dividends. You better be prepared because that's some ugly stuff, man. The risk is significant, my friends. You can only push paper from point A to point B for the venture capital firms to make money before you before you start to have to produce something. And we haven't been producing much for, for a long time now. So you can't just sit there and say, well, in the past, this has always happened. You better be prepared for the significant potential. I don't know. You don't know. No one knows. But I'm telling you, the idea... That's all just peaches and cream, man. I tell you, you better be prepared. All right, that'll be your thoughts. We'll see you.